Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for our second episode of Woman to Woman with Joanne, the talk show. Today, we interview um, life coach, entrepreneur, author, and motivational speaker, Miss Carlotta Taylor. Join us as we go on a journey with her to hear her story, to inspire you and encourage you past any circumstance you may be going through. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to our second episode of Woman to Woman with Joey and the Talk Show. I am so excited that you have decided to join us again. I am here with the most beautiful and talented and exploding <laughs> Mrs. Carlotta Taylor Franks. So I am so excited to have you on the show. Welcome. Oh, thank you. It's such an honor <laughs> to be here, Joanne. Thank you so much. You are welcome. I'm so excited that you decided to come. I was like, who is going to be our next person? And then I was like, Carlotta! <laughs> <laughs> I see you running, running, running. You are running things, girl. And so I'm excited for you. I remember when I first um, met you. The first time I met you, we were at a, we were trying to do a, a show at yes. Tougaloo. Yes. That was the first time I met you. And look at you now. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. I want to ask you, whenever we do, whenever I meet with women, my first question is always, tell me, um, where, where were you first born and raised? Were you born and raised here in Mississippi? Well, um, that's a very interesting question. It's mm -hmm. not an easy question to answer for me. Okay. But I was born in Brookhaven, Mississippi. Brookhaven. <laughs> and about maybe a few months later, mm -hmm. I was moved to Michigan, Southfield, Michigan. Michigan. Okay. And after a few years, mm -hmm. I was moved back to Mississippi. Back to Mississippi. And kind of bounced all around. So I don't really have, like, those roots uh -huh. to say I grew up in a certain place, but right. just pretty much all over the state. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, my next question is always, tell me what it was like growing up in Mississippi, <laughs> Well, you know, um, I believe several people answer that question differently. And yes, once again, a lot of people. for me, growing up in Mississippi, I didn't really get to know I was growing up in Mississippi, mm -hmm. put it that way. Okay. Um, I was not your average child. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up thinking and believing that at this time, my parents had kidnapped me. That's what I felt. <laughs> Okay. Because um, it was a lot of anger going on in the house. Mm. It was a lot of abuse going on in the house. Okay. So um, when your abuser stuffs the doors with clothes and stuffs the windowsills with towels to make this house soundproof. Oh, Because wow. the beatings would be so bad. Um, and then I'm thinking, these cannot be my parents. So I didn't really get to feel the growing up in Mississippi lifestyle. Right. And being in and out of shelters and foster care. Um, it was really more so about survival and mm -hmm. just wanting to disappear. So it was like, it's kind of like a black hole for me growing up. Oh, wow. Wow. You know. Okay. Tell me how you started to get free from that. And we'll go back to the other questions, but yeah. how did you start to get free from that? How did you process that even as a child um, and, and having to go in and, in and out of the foster care system? How, how were you able to process that and, and wow. even now as an adult? Well, I remember um, just being lost in my mind. I would call it daydreaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just just kind of going away and it, it, removing myself from reality right. mentally. And there was it was so dark. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, I did attempt suicide by the age of 12, like wow. getting close to the age of 12. But as far as surviving, I just, I didn't speak. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk. Um, I hid mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. If there was a crowd over here of school, you know, classmates, I stayed away yeah. over here in the corner. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to be seen because I was going to be talked about or laughed at, picked mm -hmm. on. And I just, I think I just hid all those years and just kept quiet. Yeah. Uh, so much so that being quiet back then and even when I was at home, mm -hmm. my father would say, you know, it was always shut up. You don't yeah. speak. Mm -hmm. and don't ask questions. So it really messed up my vocals because wow. when you don't speak for a long time, uh -huh. childhood development is you speaking and pronunciating your words properly. So right. I kind of grew up with a lisp. So yeah. those things affected Definitely. me for the long haul. And I just, surviving was just really, I remember this moment um, like it was yesterday. It was one of the worst beatings that I had received that day. And I remember um, my dad said, get out, you know, and I was 
I felt freedom come over me, so I oh, took wow. off running. And I was almost around the corner. And my mom yelled, Carlotta, come back to the top of her lungs. And see, my mom was my soft spot. My spot, my soft spot. Yeah. Um, so when I heard her voice, it was like I couldn't, I couldn't really freely just run because yeah. I knew where I was going. I was going to my grandparents' house. Mm -hmm. I was going to go to that pay phone and pick up that phone and call <laughs> my grandparents because they told me if I ever needed them to call. Right. And I felt like this was it. <laughs> They're going to rescue me. <laughs> but I, I went back to the house and I remember just down in, you know, lots of pills, like a handful of pills. And one thing I can say, Joanne, is I will never forget um, just, just praying out to God mm -hmm. as a child. Yeah. And I kid you not, just like these beams of light right here, it was just like this big, huge beam of light that just came on my right side. Mm -hmm. And I had a peace and a calm like no other. Like, I could not explain it, but I remember how I felt. Right. And it was just that inner peace that God was telling me, everything's going to be okay. Amen. I didn't know when. Mm -hmm. In my mind, me being 11 or 12 years old, I'm thinking, okay, well, everything's going to be okay when I finally graduate. Mm -hmm. I saw me graduating high school and going off to colleges, me finally making it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that by the next year or so that my mom would be getting a divorce and we would be separated from that. Yeah. And even though we were no longer in the abusive household, mm -hmm. um, it was something I used to do all the time. I used to flinch yeah. uncontrollably. Yeah. Because when you're used to getting punched in the face, yes. kicked about the body, hit with boards and brooms and all the time, every day, wow. activity, all I could do was just flinch. And mm -hmm. I did it so much when I would go to school. Mm -hmm. And you could be my classmate and mm -hmm. you could reach for a pen. I'm flinching because I'm so used to getting hit. Right. And believe it or not, um, even when my mom divorced my dad, and I don't mean to shame my parents or nothing yeah, like that right. because this was back then. Mm -hmm. We're much better now. Right. Um, I was still flinch for mm -hmm. years. Yes. So what made me overcome that, even as a child, it took a, it was a process. Definitely. But I can tell you, as soon as I started sharing and letting go of the weight, yes. sharing that emotion, mm -hmm. crying it out. Yes. And I remember the first time I did that was with a group of friends in my senior year, mm -hmm. Forest Hill. I will never forget Waikisha Mason and Tomise Lanier. They mm -hmm. were my only two friends really back then. And mm -hmm. we were in a huddle in the foyer at the high school. Mm -hmm. And we was like this. And I was sharing with them and we were all crying. And that was like the first big release I had. Right. And so it was just a period, it was a process of me just releasing and ultimately learning how to forgive. Yes. That I can say that I actually was able to work through that darkness. Right. And I've heard this so many times and I say this all the time and I have to practice this myself, that forgiveness is not for me. Mm. And you're not forgiving people for your set, for, for them, but you're forgiving them for you because- Absolutely. As long as you're holding on to the unforgiveness and you're replaying what happened to you over and over, you're re-injuring yourself yes. over and over. So they may have done it one time, they may have done it 20 times, mm. but if you keep retelling that same story and not a story as not a story of victory, but still a story of hurt, mm. then you're re-injuring yourself yes. over and over. Yes. So learning to forgive is for you, yes. not for them. Mm -mm. And sometimes people will hurt our feelings and they don't even know, but we holding this grudge holding this and grudge. we just toting it. Yes. But forgiveness is freeing for yourself. Yes. So I'm so excited. You know, it always, it, a lot of times it only just takes one or two friends. Mm. My children, or, or I'll say, I'm sorry, daughter. My daughter is like, <laughs> she, she just, I try to tell them, you don't have to have a, a whole bunch of people around you to be friends. Thanks. If you got one or two friends, you are blessed. Mm. Real true friends. Yes. You are absolutely blessed who will listen to your problems and allow you to cry on that shoulder. And you don't have to worry about your stuff being on Facebook. Right. Or people telling your story, right. you know? So that's amazing. And I'm so, I mean, cause look at you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank God. God is but amazing, God. Yes. but God. Tell me about, I know that um, you were a police officer mm -hmm. at one time. Please tell me how you, what made you go into to the police uh, force. Was it because of how you grew up? Well, actually, um, ironically so, um, I have to tell you this part because uh -huh. there was an actual police officer who mm -hmm. lived next door to us 
wow. doing some of the gruesome beatings and stuff, right? And it's so crazy because he never did anything. He knew? He, yes, he knew. Oh, wow. And I'm gonna tell you how I know he knew. Um, he was next door. He never came over. He never knocked on the door. He never interfered. He never stepped in. Mm -hmm. But I never thought anything about it. And within, I would say 2019, which mm -hmm. is last year, mm -hmm. I happened to see him. Wow. And I approached him. Wow. In a nice way. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, hey, how are you? Were you that officer that used to live next door? Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, yes, I remember you. I remember your mom. I remember your dad. I said, well, did you know that this was happening? <laughs> and he said, <laughs> yes. Kill me. I knew he was crazy. I said, well, why you never did anything? Mm. Did and he, um, he was just like, he just, he would hear the screams, but he said he just, he just never saw it. So with him never putting his eyes on it, even though he could hear the screams mm -hmm. and he knew what was going on, mm -hmm. he never saw it. So that's why he said, that's why he never did anything. So um, growing up, no, I never like, I want to be the police officer because of what happened to right. me. It was not that. It was more so much of, I used to watch In the Heat of the Night. Oh, now, come on, it's Mr. Girl. Tibbs. It was bad <laughs> on there, right? And so I used to be like, man, I want to be a police yeah. officer. Mm -hmm. But then as I grew older, that turned into I want to be an FBI agent. Oh, yeah. And then um, reading the facts on how to become an FBI agent, it was oh. like you can go through the pathway of being a police officer. And before law enforcement, I can tell you this, I was a professional quitter. Like yeah. I worked about over 30 jobs or so. Wow or opportunities, um, entrepreneurship, and I would get my foot in the, in the door by the day three or by the third week, I was out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I joined the Jackson Police Department mm -hmm. in Mississippi, awesome. and it was like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. Being awesome. the oldest of four, mm -hmm. I was already used to being the one who was responsible, um, over care, seeking and making sure everybody's fine. So it came naturally to me to make sure you don't get hurt. Right. And if somebody right. was trying to hurt you, I don't have a problem stepping in and saying, oh no, not today, it's not right. gonna happen. Exactly. And so I'm just grateful for those years of being able to go into law enforcement, mm -hmm. And after about three and a half to four years, mm -hmm. um, it's a God thing. Yeah. I was promoted to being a child protection detective. Awesome. So I was the very detective <laughs> going awesome. on scene, um, yeah. investigating cases where children were abused, sexually assaulted, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And I did it really well, I'm very sure. well. So you can tell the signs and, oh, yeah. and everything. Within yeah. two years, I was asked to join the ranks of robbery homicide. Wow. So um, that was amazing. Yeah. Um, looking back on it now, because I've been separated from law enforcement for almost five years, mm -hmm. I'm looking back like, girl, you was bad. Like I was, <laughs> you know, I was shooting you my weapon, chick. being shot at, <laughs> um, solving cases, sitting across the table with people who had just murdered somebody and I'm getting wow. them to confess. Wow. Um, you know, I thank God for those skills and those mm -hmm. skills really helped me and they would be in condition. Mm -hmm. And um, then from being a homicide detective, you know, I made acting sergeant. Then I went on to go through a whole other, uh, an entire different police academy mm -hmm. and became a federal officer. Wow. So here I am just jumping the ranks and um, going from a person who used to think that nothing good would ever happen for me. Right. Because that was what was instilled in me. Definitely. Um, and being a professional quitter at college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, my grandfather, Fred Vernon Taylor, was my inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I just replay his words over and over. Mm -hmm. So I went from being a professional quitter in college to actually tackling my degrees one by one. So when, awesome. when I graduated with my <laughs> associate's degree, <laughs> girl, you talk about cap and gown. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I walked across that stage with my cap and gown awesome. with my associates and then my bachelor's, uh -huh. and then my master's. Girl. And so I was like, okay, I can do it. Yes. And as I'm progressing in mm -hmm. law enforcement, mm -hmm. something happened. Mm -hmm. And I was on the journey to find my true purpose, and I kind of got caught up thinking it was in my job, yes. in the badge. Yes. Because yes. I was good at solving cases. I was good at breaking um, criminals and getting them to confess. But it just hit me. One day I was driving down the street, and I looked to my left and I was viewing a graveyard. Mm -hmm. And instantly in my spirit, God spoke to me and said, are you gonna go there with what I put inside of you? Mm. See, I know that <laughs> since I was a child, mm -hmm. and I love talking about childhood because it really puts things in proper perspective. Yes. No matter what I went through, I could still pull some strengths from it. Right. I remember counseling <clears throat> my mother wow. 
I remember counseling my mother at 12. Mm -hmm. She would be crying. Yeah. And me, just being a daughter, not wanting to see my mom cry, yeah. I would start speaking to her mm -hmm. and instilling things and greatness in her. And I'm 12. Right. And I would see the tears dry up. Mm -hmm. And I would see a smile come across her face. Yeah. And it started happening more often with my friends and mm -hmm. other adults. And then I started to realize that I am an inspirer. Yes. I know how to pull out your strengths and present it back to you and let you know you can do it. Right. And so I started learning that, that was that was my purpose. Mm -hmm. And God showed me plainly that, Carlotta, you did not go through in mm -hmm. and out foster care, been moved almost over 26 different times. Uh -huh to just go through life and say, oh, I got a badge and I'm a good, you know, I'm a good detective. Right. You gotta go back and encourage other people who have endured abuse, who have, right. you know, going through adversity and some of them still don't know how to let it go, right. how to forgive, how to, you know, get it out and then walk into your purpose and be the per person you were designed to be. Some people still don't know how to do that. Right. So I was like, you know what? I gotta go for it. I gotta go for it. And believe it or not, I put in my two weeks notice Oh, wow. From a federal government job wow. position. That's awesome. And I got focused. Mm -hmm. After about 10 years of procrastinating, Yes. I got focused and I said, you know what? I got to get this book written. Yes. I got to do it. Awesome. And that was a journey in itself. It didn't mm -hmm. take long. And <laughs> just diving off into that and getting serious mm -hmm. about getting this message out, just a story right. that would be inspiring to other people. Right. Um, I went through another healing battle. I thought I was good. Mm -hmm. You know, you think you're good because you're an author. Definitely. You think yes. you're good mm -hmm. until you start writing your story. Girl, don't even mention that. <laughs> until you have How to start going I back. I started and stopped with that book and yes. finally got it finished. Definitely, I yeah. know. Yeah. I had some moments that I had to just stop and just, I had a whole breakdown, mm -hmm. crying, like I, I went back to that place. Yes. But I wanted my readers, anybody went from the time you look at the book to mm -hmm. the time you open the pages, I want I them to go with me. Mm -hmm. When I walk into a house, when I when I went through my lowest lows, I want you right. there with me. Definitely. And when I come out of it on the other side, mm -hmm. I want you there with me. Right. So you can know that you too can overcome exactly. and you too can go be the person you were destined to be in the world. Definitely. So that's when No More Flinching was born. No and more flinching. Yes. <laughs> no more flinching. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and um, then um, I have a heart for foster youth, mm -hmm. people who went through the foster care system. Mm -hmm. And when they aged out, typically they're huh, on the streets, yes. on drugs, in jail, slipping through the cracks, or worse. So tell me, what do you know about how does that particularly work? Because it's like, like you just said, when they when they age out of the foster system, if nobody really adopts them or anything, mm. they're just on their own. Yeah. It's a sad case. Um, I just gotta, I, I love um, the power of connection and the power mm -hmm. of working with people who are doing something about it. So I have a, a really close friend. She's a, a foster care alumni uh -huh. and her name is Latasha C. Watts. See, I okay. have somebody step in, uh -huh. which is a, a yes. nonprofit for foster youth. Yes. And she has um, a nonprofit called The Purple Project. Awesome. And we partnered together, and um, that's why you'll see me in Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, mm -hmm. doing the work. Right. The foster youth, uh, yes, they do slip through the cracks for mm -hmm. the most part, even right here in the state of Mississippi. Definitely. A lot um, right here in the state of Mississippi. Yes. And um, what happens is <laughs> sometimes they may get the help they need while they are in Foster, foster care. care. And I said, sometimes they may. Sometimes they may get the proper treatment. They may look up and get a good foster parent, mm -hmm. or they may look up and get adopted. But for the majority, a lot of them don't get adopted. Yeah. And a lot of them don't get good foster care. Right. A lot of them get into foster care and then they get abused again in foster Definitely. care. Definitely. That happened that's to me. Yeah. Yeah. In One of my foster care. parents had me and my brother eating hog slop. No. Before she gave it to the hogs no. on her farm. Oh, yeah. See, I know what that's like. And so that's why I wanted to do something about it. And when somebody stepped in, we uh, one of the first events we had just recently last mm -hmm. year was we, we gave out toys mm -hmm. um, to the foster youth. And, and those children just lit up and were saying that was one of the best Christmases they right. ever had. It's just doing the little good that you can. Right. And so by the time they age out, what really happens is they don't, the connection, even no matter if it was just a little good, mm -hmm. they don't have that anymore. Right. Because it's cut off. 
And I just, it's so hard for me to believe that they just let the, okay, you're 18, you've aged out. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. And they don't give them anything. They don't have any direction. No, okay, go to this place and you have somewhere to stay or. It's not guaranteed that they're gonna get that. This is your next step process. Mm -hmm. That's why somebody step in, comes in, to let them know, hey, we wanna coach you, we wanna help you, right. help you journal, help you know the power in reading, write it down, keeping up with your planner, you know, things like that, because it's just like they're just out there. Yeah. And now they're taught, you know, you gotta defend for yourself. And then the problem comes in when I see with my own eyes, because I like like to keep things like basic like mm -hmm. let's just keep it very simple right At the end of the day they're going to be judged for the decisions they make because mm -hmm. now you're an adult At 18, and now adult, we're going to stick it to you because now we child. got the law yeah you know mm -hmm. and so like i said a lot of them turn to drugs yes. a lot of them turn to the street wind up getting you know in jail mm -hmm. committed suicide yeah suicide rates are really really high for foster youth when they mm -hmm. age out right and that's why i'm so grateful for you know um nonprofits like somebody step in mm -hmm. nasca yeah okay and for the purple project just to right. name a few awesome. um of people who actually do something to help you know mm -hmm. that's what it's all about awesome. and it's a sad case it and we is. just want to do the best we can. Awesome. Well, um, before we end, I want you to give all that information so people will know who to reach out to. Absolutely. And even some, some child, foster children who may see this broadcast. Yes. And they'll know that there is some help out there for them. Right. That you're not just throwing out there by yourself. Absolutely. Because that is just heartbreaking. A lot of the people, sometimes we see homeless people and we think, you know, they need to get a job. But, but you just don't know the story behind some no. of these people who are homeless. Right. And so, and it starts from sometimes 18. Yeah. Being kicked out of the foster system after you age out. Yeah. And now you're just out there. You know, I really didn't think that I was going to get this job, but I am so excited that I did. Let's celebrate, celebrate. But what about the house? I was so excited about getting a job. I didn't think about moving and trying to sell a house. So how are we going to do all this? Oh, I'm sorry. I heard y'all were trying to sell your home. Well, look, I know a great real estate company that not only puts a sign in your yard, but they'll also market your home. Ma'am, we're here trying to celebrate my wife's new job. Congratulations, girl. Well, look, like I was saying, this company even allows you to choose your own marketing. They can also help you purchase a new home. Really? really? Community first real estate. Oops, let me go. I see some people coming in and they love to talk and invade your privacy. Bye bye. Call now, Community First Real Estate, 601 956 6567. Pink Leopard is an online ladies' fashion accessories boutique and a lifestyle brand. At Pink Leopard, you will find ladies' earrings, a door opener, bracelets, brooches, and many other fashion accessories. Visit us at www.mypinkleopard.com and join our mailing list so you can stay in touch with us. That's www.mypinkleopard.com. All right, class, welcome to the school of Patty Peck Honda. You want to know why Patty Peck's used car super center is the best? Let's take it S by S. Smart. Shop Patty Peck, save big, and get a fully insured lifetime powertrain warranty with your premium pre owned purchase. Shiny because you get complimentary car washes for life. Safe because Patty Peck is sanitizing around the clock and following all CDC guidelines to keep you safe. Sporty. Some say buying a sports car at Patty Peck might knock 10 years off your face. Look good, feel great, and shop PattyPeckHonda.com today. Class dismissed. Let's talk about something happy. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about something happy. I feel it. Because you are smiling, girl. Yes. Tell me about this new journey that you're on. Oh my I, I know you did a little bit of Primerica with your, yeah. I'm going to say a little bit, because with your husband, y'all did some stuff. A lot bit. <laughs> y'all did a lot bit. Yes. But tell me about the journey that you're on right now and the team that you're building and oh, wow. all of the things that you're doing, because it is absolutely wonderful to Amazing. see. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I just want, I got to say a shout out to the John Maxwell team, John all Maxwell. Right. Uh, meeting him, that was like a huge benchmark to help me get on the path of just being a speaker, sharing my story. Yes. Um, and I started traveling all around the world, the globe, being a paid speaker. That was but God moments. Yeah. Um, inspiring people. That's what I do at the very core of me. Mm -hmm. And then 
um, working with Primerica Financial Services with my husband, Paul Franks. Mm -hmm. He is like more of the investment guru mm -hmm. and he's going to help you get your life insurance together as well. I'm also a life agent, so I did awesome. work with him and we were going hard and strong, you yeah. know. And then it was like, I had, it was something in me. I was like, man, you know, here I am, I'm speaking, uh, but forgive me, mm -hmm. this is just me. I'm talking about myself here. Yes. And when I take the stage, I notice one thing. Yes, I've been a prior military as well, mm -hmm. uh, awesome. prior law enforcement. I know how to work out, but I wasn't. Yeah. So I knew that I, there was something in me. I needed to be connected to the health and wellness industry right. and the CBD industry as well. So I was like, I didn't want to be looking like a busted can of biscuits because I felt like that's what I was looking like. I tried to put on the dress and it was like, pop, pop, Girl. pop. I'm like, no, Kalada, you so got to do better. No, you good, Joy. <laughs> I'm talking about me. <laughs> I said, I got to do something. And so I remember scrolling on my Facebook page, you know, the power of social media. Yes. <laughs> and I happened to see a post by Robert Williams, who's Robert married Williams. to Diana Williams. Okay, yes. And um, you may know her from the hit show Bring mm -hmm. It and stuff like that. Definitely. But um, I've gotten to know her on a more personal level, as a mm -hmm. friendship level. And so without hesitation, as soon as I knew it was with the health and wellness industry, and as soon as I knew it was with CBD, I was like, I've been looking for this. Yeah. See, what you're looking for is looking for you as well. It's always looking right? for you. And so I, I made the decision, jumped on in. That was at the end of 2020, the mm -hmm. very end. And 2019. With, what's this? 2019. Girl, don't get, don't. <laughs> See, when you're an entrepreneur, <laughs> or when you're like, you when you're there. You don't know what today is. You don't know what today is. Already. <laughs> right. I, 20, 2019. I can relate. <laughs> 2019. Excuse me. I was like, let's just go for it. And so um, I initially okay. wanted to um, join and partner with, with them. Uh -huh. I said, you know, I got to do this. It's got to happen. And once I did that, within a few weeks later, it started rocking and rolling. Yes. And then you know what happened after that? What? COVID-19. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of my, I, I had book, uh, speaking gigs booked, mm -hmm. some powerhouse. I won't even name them because I don't want to put it out there. Yeah. But I had um, some powerhouse speaking engagements coming up. I had just got uh, announced on the Tamron Hall show as that. being a speaker with the Women of Strength yes. tour. It was just taking off, taking off. And then it was like, Ugh. yeah. God's like, wait a minute. And you know what? <laughs> Another book guy moment, the fact that I said yes to the opportunity with Diana Williams and mm -hmm. I partnered. Mm -hmm. And that business continued to take off. It's just like right. I just stepped into the leadership role mm -hmm. and I became a talent scout, you know, for people who wanted to change their health, who wanted to lose weight, feel great, or even gain weight. Yeah. And when I did that, um, it just started a big boom. Yeah. And I am grateful to say shout out to my team, Red Sea Action. Red Sea Action. Yes, shout out to my team, <laughs> the Players Club. Um, and shout out to 1,000 Families with Coach Stormy Wellington. Um, mm -hmm. I just came back from my house not too long ago in L.A. Uh -huh. And just being around millionaires. Awesome. Shout out to Jack Fallon, the founder of Total Life Changes. Mm -hmm. Like, really tapping in and learn, learning and knowing that the uh, Total Life Changes is a it's a business, but it's a it's a God based business, right? You know, yeah. and it just really has taken over. And I was able to earn over six figures within right at six and a half to close to seven months. That's you know? amazing. Amazing, just yeah. coming in, not really knowing too much about it, mm -hmm. and I just gotta you know give credit where credit is due. It's to my amazing um, sponsor mm -hmm. and friend and coach Diana Williams, Coach Stormy Wellington, one thousand families, and my team, Red Sea Action. I have some amazing leaders on my team, right? And so we are more than just like total life changers, though. We are mm -hmm. life changers mm -hmm. and we help each other. It's like iron sharpers iron. Right. And we're continuously growing. Okay. Um, and that's just one of the things that I'm doing right now. And I still um, I do I conduct and facilitate masterminds. Awesome. And it's some very powerful moments in the masterminds. We Right now we're reading the book, The Moses Code, mm -hmm. every Tuesday awesome. at 12 o'clock. Every Tuesday And so 12. that is a powerhouse mm -hmm. in itself. And I do one-on-one -on -one coaching uh -huh. to help people with their mindset. Awesome. Because a lot of people look at me and be like, Claudia, we went to school together. <laughs> like, girl, what are you doing? Like, can you just can you just inspire me? I just, I just need your energy. Yes. And so we just book a one-on-one. -on -one. And we and go from there. Done. So I, I just done. love um, just helping people. Right. I love adding value to people's lives. And that's what I'm all about right now. And awesome. I'm just being elevated, just really focusing on my self-development. Yes. Because the moment you stop 
-hmm. with self-development. The moment you stop, you know, getting yourself prepared right. for that next moment, then mm -hmm. you, you're not growing anymore. Right. And that's the important thing, self-development. Yes. Tell me about, um, or how would you encourage, because not only did you succeed in one entrepreneur or what do you call it? Network marketing mm -hmm. uh, company with, with Primerica, but now you're... Um, network you're um excelling with this one as well yes. tell me the name of it again total life changes. total life changes yes so would it be safe to say that any network marketing company that you decide to join it can work it can but work you have to, to work. do the work yes <laughs> you know See, it works it just do you work exactly <laughs> you know that's my thing I, uh, there's yes. so many people who say i tried that it didn't work oh my goodness no maybe it's not that it didn't work right you know? Right, absolutely. So, yeah, um, so encouraging everybody who thinks, you know, this job is it. There are so many different opportunities, even if you feel like you don't know your purpose or you don't know what else you can do. Some people say, I don't, I can't do nothing else. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something that you can do. There's and as long as you're willing to put the work in, you can be successful in yes. anything that you put your mind to. Um, I was telling my son that um, he was trying to figure out, you know, um, what he liked to do. I'm like, well, what did you want to be when you was a little kid? <laughs> Normally, when you're growing up and, and as a kid, when you say it's something that you want to do, the enemy comes in and he like steals that away quickly mm -hmm. as a child. Yes. So when you're growing up, it's like you've lost your purpose. Mm -hmm. But normally when you're a little kid, you you pretty much know what you want to do. Right. <laughs> Bozo the, cat, the Clown. Have you heard the story of Bozo the Clown? His, he was in medical school, I think. Wow. And all of a sudden, I, now I think, y'all research this for yourself, but Bozo the Clown, I think he was in medical school and then all of a sudden he just told his parents, I don't want to go to school anymore to be a doctor. I want to be a clown. Wow. Again, research it and make sure, but I do believe wow. that he was in medical school and he decided that he wanted to be a clown. Wow. And that's where Bozo the Clown came from. Come on now, Bozo the Clown. <laughs> Y'all researched that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Carlotta, I am so excited that you decided to stop by and join us today. I know there's so many questions that I probably forgot to ask, it's but okay. this has been absolutely wonderful. Um, I do want to encourage you, view, my viewers, our viewers here today, to um, get her book, No More Flinching, um, Five Steps to Overcoming Adversity because we all face adversity every day. So um, Carlotta, tell people how they can book you as a motivational speaker, how they can get in touch with you to um, start their total life change, yes. or even if they need life insurance, tell them how to get in touch with your Absolutely. husband for that in that area as well. Absolutely. Well, um, you can definitely, you can order and purchase my book if you want an autographed copy from CarlottaTaylor.com. Mm -hmm. All right. And you can also reach out to me on Facebook at Carlotta Taylor. You can also reach out to me on Instagram at official Carlotta Taylor. And you can also um, you can call or text. You can preferably text. It's easier to text yeah. nowadays. Um, <laughs> 601-460-4099 um, to book me for speaking engagements, um, for coaching, masterminds, one-on-ones, whatever you would like, um, or just a consultation. Mm -hmm. You can book me there. Awesome. And one last thing before we go, um, what advice would you give to a young girl who's been through some of the things that maybe you've gone through, abuse growing mm -hmm. up, molested, right? whatever the case may be, how would you encourage her to take control and take ownership of her own life instead of um, continuing to re-injure herself by saying this, this is what happened? Right. How would you encourage her? Well, that is a huge question. And what I would say to that person, that one person out there, if you are going through abuse, um, or even if you've experienced it and you still haven't been able to overcome it, one, I would say, realize the power in right now, mm -hmm. the power in the current and present moment. Mm -hmm. And you can get out mm -hmm. or you can overcome. Mm -hmm. It's your emotions mm -hmm. that is stirring up with, inside of you. It's something you're not letting go of. Right. So one, if you're in it, I want to encourage you to seek help, Definitely. seek shelter mm -hmm. immediately because right. it won't get better. Mm -hmm. Two, if you have went through it and you just haven't overcame it, you have the power to make the decision to overcome. Mm -hmm. It just may be some steps that you got to do. That's why you want to check out my book, No More Flinching, mm -hmm. because I share with you exactly what I did to overcome. Mm -hmm. So it's a few things I can tell you right now. One is getting it out. You got to release it mm -hmm. to someone you trust. You mm -hmm. have to change the way you think 
And you have to become somebody else, become who you are des destined to be. Mm -hmm. And three, you definitely have to forgive. There's some other things in the book that will help you as well. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to talk to me, because energy is everything. Mm -hmm. Energy is everything. If you would like to talk to me, definitely look me up on Facebook or Instagram. Send me a DM, mm -hmm. and I would love to speak with you more about this topic. Awesome. But it's a, it's a series of steps. And to be definitely. honest, everybody has to do what works best for them. Right. Exactly. You know, that's one of the main things. And don't listen to nobody else around you. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you have to deal with yourself. Right. So you have to do it to where you feel comfortable mm -hmm. and where you can say, okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready to move on. Because mm -hmm. people can give you all kind of advice. Right. It's not until you decide. Mm -hmm. It's not until you believe mm -hmm. that it will cause change in your life. Right. And one more question. How and, and I may ask this to every uh, <laughs> every guest that I have, but how important is it to you to mind your mental health? Because so many African American people, mm -hmm. you know, feel like it's just you're crazy if you if you go into a counselor or things mm -hmm. like that. Can I encourage them to continuously, you know, what I mean, to go and seek counseling yes. if that's needed? Because sometimes you're trying to do this stuff on your own, and and. It's too heavy. Right. It's too much. Right. So seeking counseling is very important. Seeking counseling is optimal. Your mental health, emotional intelligence is really where it's at. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't even know the term emotional intelligence, you definitely need to look into it. Um, your mental health is very important. And a lot of times, especially in the African-American community, mm -hmm. we want to like, oh, that's some, we don't talk about it. Yeah. We want to, just like the abuse and, and growing up with that, you know, passing it down generation after generation, we don't want to talk about it. But when you expose it and when you talk about it now, you're giving that thing, up, like people are able to focus on it. You're able to heal from it. You're able to identify the steps that you need. So you definitely want to talk to someone. You definitely want to get it out. You have to release. Mm -hmm. Like you have to release in a safe and comfortable position for you. So whomever you seek counsel from, whether it's a, a, a psychiatrist, a counselor, whether it's in the church, the ministry, you have to have um, a place where you can get it out mm -hmm. and seek counseling because that's yes. definitely going to be needed. Amen. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carlotta, for joining us today. This has been absolutely wonderful. And we're going to have to talk some more after we finish Absolutely. This. <laughs> Thank you. It was my pleasure and honor. And I'm honored to be on your show, Joanne. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, my people, thank y'all for joining us again today. Leave us some comments. Tell us what you think. If y'all have questions that y'all want us to answer, just email us, inbox us, and we'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> I'm Carlotta Taylor, and you can follow me on Facebook at Carlotta Taylor or Instagram at official Carlotta Taylor. And you can also book me by texting or calling 832 492-2259. And I would love to speak with you regarding coaching, one-on-one -on -one speaking engagements, or if you are ready for your total life change. Hello, hello, my beautiful people. Thank y'all so much for joining. If you have questions that you would like to ask Woman to Woman with Joanne, um, please email us at joanne at woman to woman with joanne.com. I also want to thank the Pink Leopard for this beautiful necklace that I'm sporting today. And I would also like to thank Tasseled and Clipped for this beautiful navy dress. Y'all check out their websites, Tasseled and Clipped and the Pink Leopard. Thank y'all so much for joining us. If you would like to be a guest on the show, or if you'd like to sponsor an episode, please reach out to us. You can email us at joanne at woman to woman with joanne .com.